one thing is a gateway for something else, yeah. and it's a gateway for something yeah, else. Yeah, so alcohol, weed, is, is that smoke how it is? weed and smoke weed. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my dad, rather, we smoked weed with him because he didn't want us getting any bad batches of other people. My mum wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, she... Um, yeah, a, but he's a Rasta, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to ask, yeah. Because I know, I know you're Jamaican. Is, yeah. Uh, were both your parents Jamaican? Or? Yeah, my mum yeah. was, but she was... She's, he's first generation and she's second generation. So he was born out there and he came here in... He was born in 56, came here when he was nine in 65 to live with his aunt who couldn't have kids. And my mum, she was one of 11, so she was the eighth one, but she was the first one born here. Oh. So, yeah. I think, why did you leave paradise? But <laughs> it's what it is. Were you born here then? Yeah, I was born here in 75, yeah. Queen Mary's, Roehampton. Sounds posh, but it's really not. Now I drive the bus past there when I'm on the 493, so, wow. yeah. If you were younger, yeah. Or what would you say to your younger self? What would I say to my younger self? Just know what a beautiful... Because sometimes, like, sometimes I think there's a bit of bad in the best of us and there's a bit of good in the worst of us. So to just be your own best friend, that's what I would say. Be your own best friend. Don't... Because that's the thing, me thinking I was fat, black and ugly, that's what I really thought about myself. I grew up with a lot of things, like there was like domestic violence and my dad, he was like a diagnosed schizophrenic. He's, he's all right now, but he was a diagnosed schizophrenic and he used to beat my mum and she used to beat me. And I used to think at four, like, is she beating me because he's beating her? And I made a lot of life decisions based on stuff that was going on. I was thinking, oh my God, I'm a victim of circumstance. And a lot of decisions I made, like my partners are white, basically. And sometimes it's like, I don't know if I did it unconsciously I just thought because I used to get bullied at school as well like I was saying I went to school in Victoria and um I thought I thought um everything I, when I look at pictures of myself as a kid like I said I thought I was fat black and ugly um I wasn't like when I was drinking it's like I wasn't even drinking on the truth it was just lies I look at pictures of myself and I wasn't ugly I wasn't fat and I wasn't even black I was a dark shade of brown <laughs> it's like oh if you had the life I had then you drink like me and I don't know, I just never felt like a part of. I always felt like I was on the outside looking in and everyone else had a rule book that I never had. So all this um, self-hatred and stuff. I mean, maybe if I went to a school around the corner where there was more people looking like me, but there weren't really many role models. There weren't really people like me. We weren't allowed to play outside. We were very sheltered because my dad was like, oh, if anyone does anything to my kids, I'll kill, murder them, basically. So, so yeah, and he... Yeah, like I said, he's, he's a lovely guy. He had his own set of issues, though. Like, he was in and out of prison for... for um, it's more or less cars, like, cars... Not car crime, like, he didn't go around stealing cars, but because he was violent, like, when somebody cut him up, he'd get out and, like, mm. So we used to go and visit him in, in, inside, and... And to me, I think... The thing is now, like, I can see the bigger picture. Like, I can see that his mum kind of gave him away when he was nine to go and live with somebody else. She had four other people, four other sons, and they stayed with her. So I can see that he's got his own rejection and abandonment issues. So he's probably treated women a certain way because of that. My mum, she had me when she was really young. She was 17 when she had me. God, like, yeah, no matter... No, no. I had three kids by the time I was 21, but she was 17. When I look at a seven... I've got a 17-year-old daughter. I can't imagine her being a parent. When I've got a 17-year-old, a 27-year-old... 28 year old, a 29 year old, and a nearly 12 year old. So I was greedy, like I said, more than a Chinese year old, a rabbit, and a bread like one. But yeah, it's just a lot going on, really. So, um, how would you describe your upbringing? You said it was quite well, it, it was like I could tell they loved us, but they never like really said it. Like me now, I'm like really touchy feely, oh yeah, I love you, give them hugs and stuff like that. But it wasn't like that. My mum, she used to buy us stuff like to show us her affection, and she did want the best for us. That's why she sent us to those schools. Grew up going to CYM, Centre for Young Musicians, to oh. play violin, piano and all that kind of stuff. But as for, she's, it's like with age, I think, and when she had my younger brother and sister, because there was me and Natalie and then there was Nathan and Ty, when she had us lot, it was like quite hard, get beaten for everything, like breaking a toy or stealing or whatever it was. But with my younger two, with the younger two siblings, she was a lot, she was a bit older, so she had a bit more time or patience or whatever. But yeah, that's the thing. Sometimes I feel like, when you think about the way we got beaten back then, you think that we seen as child abuse today. I shouldn't even be talking to you, mother. But um, 
But yeah, no, I slightly got to honour your mother and father. And really, they say that they did the best they could with the tools they had, really. So that's what I like about being recovery. Because in recovery, it's sort of shown me all these things. And I can shine a light on it, look at it for what it really was, not blame anyone. Because they say, like, it's everyone's fault and no one's to blame. So I can't, because there's always something you can go back to, oh, that happened. Their parents did that to them and they did that to them. So it's just really about being open-minded, having compassion, being forgiving, um, and just being kind and thought, word, and deed, and just not blaming because it's not really helpful to anyone. You can't go back and change the past, but you can understand it through some work and inner work. So I've had to have counselling and all that stuff as well. Kind of need some more psychotherapy for a few <laughs> years. But the thing is, it's so, it's so easy to pay for stuff that's bad yeah. for you. But when it's something like that's going to sort you out mentally, oh, no, I don't want to pay 50 or £60 pound a week for that now, but you spend hundreds yeah. of pounds on illicit substances. Ugh. So, it, yeah, it's all about oblivion and not wanting to exist and stuff like that and, like, wanting to disappear. I had food disorder. I had all kind of things. There was always something that... Was, now it's clothes, shoes, hat. How many bloody onesies and stuff do I need to... And it's, that's what I'm saying. It's like you're trying to fix what's going on inside with external stuff and it just doesn't work. It might work momentarily, like, with the illicit substances, but at the end, you have to really just figure out what's going on inside, find those core beliefs, change them because they're not true... And then, um, yeah, it takes a lot of work, but I'm definitely in a much better place now than I was. Tried to do a little bit of comedy as well when I was going to these meetings. Um, Russell, I hope you won't mind me saying Russell, but he was the one that got me into co um, comedy. He heard me sharing in a meeting and he said, oh, Tasha, you're funny, you should get the time out, book, do an open mic and start doing comedy. And then I did, um, he said, you can't judge yourself till you've done your first 100 gigs. And I remember I did a gig um, called An Evening with Just Another Addict in on the Monday the 1st of December 2014 and like we were like support acts to Russell Brand and it was my sixth wow. my sixth gig in and it was great they're like light bulbs on the mirrors and I was thinking yeah like this is like it was my best gig ever and it stuff just went downhill from there I mean I did about 150 in total on wow. the on the hamster wheel that is the comedy 150 circuit 150 shows yeah like just That's it's just lot. like in pubs and stuff like that going That's out there still a lot of shows yeah <laughs> yeah, but it's like the laughter is payment if you get any. And I just feel like I wasn't getting... I just didn't think I was that funny, really. I mean, I've got some stuff on YouTube, but yeah. but um, but I just had to get a real job because I had, like, five kids to feed. So And now I've got a grandson to add to that mix, so... Oh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, I'm really old now, so... <laughs> <laughs> a female, black and old. I've got a triple, triple things going against me, but...